You're live? Nice. Hey guys, Dr. Jim Stepani here, owner, formulator, Jim Supplement Science. I'm here in the bodybuilding.com gym for about 20 minutes. Uh, I've got a minute here in between uh, meetings and whatnot to uh, do a live Q&A. So let the uh, questions uh, shoot. Keto for fat loss, yes or no? So uh, keto, the question is, Keto for fat loss, yes or no? Do I believe in keto? Now you can go to my YouTube channel and watch my video on my opinion on keto diet. Now what's good about keto diet is it's very effective uh, for fat loss. As a matter of fact, Jeff Volick, who's uh, one of the top researchers on uh, keto uh, research, is a good friend of mine and colleague, was at University of Connecticut as well. So I'm well up on the keto uh, research and how effective it is for fat loss. What I don't like about keto is the fact that once you've removed all your carbs, you really have you know, little else to go. You've removed one macro completely out of the equation. Now you only have two macros to play with, fat and protein, and any athlete wants to make sure they're getting an ample amounts of fat and protein. So, they never really want to be lowering protein. So I do have days where I eat very much uh, a keto diet where I have no carbs. Uh, as a matter of fact, today, for example, but mainly it's because I'm manipulating my diet and I do a bit of uh, carb cycling, um, but I don't do keto constantly. And the reason is, like I said, when you drop all your carbs, then you know there's, there are fewer macros to play with and you don't need to drop all your carbs to lose body fat. You can slowly, that's why I prefer manipulating carbs and either slowly decreasing carbs over time or carb cycling or some, some form of that. But it's very effective for fat loss. Like I said, the only issue is when you do hit a plateau, you can't lower your carbs anymore. So now you have to start lowering your, bot, your fat intake and your protein. Um, any advice for breaking through a weight loss plateau? Any advice that I have for breaking through a weight loss plateau? Well, you know, that's really going to depend on the individual and the diet that, that you're using. But if you've really hit a plateau and you just, nothing that, that seems uh, to work within uh, sort of the realm of the diet strategy that you're using, you might want to try a whole different diet strategy. You know, I use intermittent fasting, for example, firm believer in intermittent fasting, but it doesn't mean that intermittent fasting works for everyone. So what is your diet? If you're not using intermittent fasting and you've hit a plateau and it's been a steady plateau for a while, you might want to change up your strategy. Try intermittent fasting. One thing I will say about intermittent fasting is that with the majority of people that I've worked with who tend to not see uh, great results from other diet strategies. Once they start the intermittent fasting, it's amazing how effective it is for the majority of people. On the flip side, if you're doing intermittent fasting and you've hit a plateau and there's nothing else that you can do within the realm of staying within intermittent fasting, then maybe you want to try a different strategy where you're eating all day but watching your carbs, do a regular uh, carb cycling diet. So, try switching up uh, diet strategies would probably be the only advice that I can really give on a sort of vague question like that without knowing more details about the actual diet, etc. cetera. All right, best workout plan for functional strength. So best workout plan for functional strength, well, my uh, workout uh, plan is um, my Fitter Fester Leaner program, which uh, involves pretty much all uh, elements of fitness. It's not just focusing on strength, it's not just focusing on endurance or uh, fat loss, but with the program, we're doing a lot of explosive moves, a lot of functional training, and even, and even running in, in, in other forms of cardio. Um, what do you eat before working out? So, as I said, I intermittent fast, and I typically fast till 4 p.m., and then at 4 p.m. I I eat until 12. And so I train within my feeding window. And I typically train close to 4 p.m. So around 4 p.m., I typically end my uh, fast with a pre-gym and then a pro-gym, where I'll combine them 
together with some of the flavors and make a pre-gym pro-gym. And that'll be the first meal that I have and it'll also be my pre-workout meal. Um, can you explain salt intake while dieting? So, if the question is salt and fat loss or is the question salt and sort of uh, water uh, levels, there's a lot of misconceptions uh, about sodium uh, to begin with. And the first is that a low sodium diet is, is healthy. Actually, for athletes, it's quite the opposite. A low sodium diet is not healthy for athletes. Sodium is the most critical element in the body. It's essential for muscle contraction, and we lose it when we exercise. So athletes need to be getting in plenty of sodium. You shouldn't be worrying about living on a low sodium diet, even if you're worried about looking leaner. If you live on a low sodium diet, what happens is your body regulates to the level of sodium that you're consuming and maintains normal body levels of, of water. We all regulate our body levels. So the only way you can be truly uh, hold paper thin skin is if you do some form of sodium and water uh, manipulation. So you can't hold that condition all the time. So you're actually better off consuming higher levels of sodium normally for performance, uh, for even fat loss, and for when you do want to, if you are getting ready for a photo shoot or a contest, then when you do want to drop and prep for a photo shoot, when you drop your sodium to low levels, it'll help you look much leaner because you'll drop a lot of that extracellular water. Cardio before or after weightlifting? Cardio before or after weightlifting has been a long, I mean, a long debated question. And what, you know, I'm, I'm always, what's your goal? Do you uh, want to build muscle and strength? If that's your goal, I would lift first because you don't want to fatigue yourself with cardio. However, doing a little bit of cardio is your warm up before a workout. That makes sense and then saving the real intense cardio after workout. If you want to run a marathon, well, guess what? You should do your cardio before your weight training if you're going to do them on the same day. Now, on the flip side of that, if you check out my shortcut to shred program, I show you that you can literally combine cardio with weights. It doesn't have to be before or after. It can actually be at the same time. So, you know, there's a lot of rules about cardio, but they're just theories. If you look at Shortcut to Shred, it shows you that you can literally do cardio in between your weightlifting workout, get stronger, build muscle, and burn more fat. Carlos from Facebook says, currently doing your shortcut to size. I really like it. It's so helpful. Thank you. Awesome, Carlos. So I will say one thing about the shortcut to, uh, did he say size? Yes. So shortcut to size is, you know, it's a 12-week program. And what you'll learn, you know, the thing about my programs are I don't want you to just get results. Obviously, you'll get results as you're seeing, but I want you to learn why you're getting results in learning new things, like I said, with the cardio. You can do cardio in your weight training workout right in the middle and still get results. That's shortcut to shred. With shortcut to size, I show you that people think, oh, you got to stick in this 8 to 10 rep range. I show you that frequently changing up your rep range, 12 to 15, even down the three to five, actually can lead to better gains in muscle size and strength consecutively. So keep up the great work. Uh, ETA on new flavors that are in other groups, retailers at Body. Yeah, so the, the 2.0 flavors are coming literally any, any day, uh, about a week uh, or, or two now. As, as I was explaining um, to some people here at bodybuilding.com, some of the issues are just, you know, the demand uh, has been so great that just, you know, fulfilling it at other places, at other retailers, I'm still trying to keep up with demand there. So getting it to everyone, it'll be getting uh, to bodybuilding.com and I'll let you guys know on social media. Um, how do you keep yourself motivated? You guys, I mean, my motivation is waking up literally every morning and saying, what am I going to teach you guys? What, what workout am I doing? For those of you who aren't aware, I am posting my own workouts every day on my own social media, on my Instagram, my Facebook, my Twitter. On the bodybuilding.com website, I post the technique that I'm doing. And so I change up the technique about every week or so. So 
You get to learn the new technique and then you get to follow my workouts every single day right along uh, with me. You can see how I train. So really what motivates me is waking up every morning and wondering what you guys want to learn and, and how I can better teach it to you. That's what really motivates me. With shortcut to size, can I do cardio? Yes, with shortcut to size, any cardio you want. You can even do, like I said, that cardio acceleration, as I was explaining with shortcut to shred, where you're gonna do 60 seconds of cardio right in between your bench press, right in between your curls. So instead of taking you know, a minute rest where you're just sitting, you're gonna do some cardio. And it can be things like just bench step ups, kettlebell swings, running in place. It's really that simple. Or you can add cardio after the workout, whatever choice uh, you want. It's up to you, but definitely feel free to add, I recommend adding cardio to shirt with the size. Do all your programs translate for women as well as men? Yeah, you know, my motto is train for your goals, not your gender. So you want to get stronger? It's the same for a Male or a female, you want to build more lean muscle mass? It's really the same uh, for a male or a female. And you know, what my programs are about, like I said, it's not about here, do this. You have to follow this. Sure, I have many of those programs that you follow, but while you're following them, you're learning them. So now you can go structure your own workout. So you take one of my workouts, you use those concepts of like shortcut the size where reps change every single week. But hey, you want more glute focus? Uh, add more Romanian deadlifts, add more, you know, kickbacks using those same concepts. So all, you know, all my programs apply to females. But again, if your goal, you know, a, a guy might not be as focused on his glutes, although they should be uh, as a female, uh, but it's, it's, it's the techniques uh, and the principles that I really teach you that, that apply to everyone. Well, I'll tell you right there, anytime someone says to me, I watch what I eat, it means you're not on a structured diet plan. So how do you get rid of those last five pounds? Get on a, a structured diet plan. Literally, like I said, you can change up your strategies. It doesn't even matter. If you're not, if you're not following any formal uh, diet strategy where you're just sort of eating willy-nilly, you know, you just, oh, I watch what I eat. As soon as you jump on it, it doesn't matter if it's paleo, if it's intermittent fasting, if it's carb cycling, if it's low carb, if it's keto, you'll see results because now you're following a, a structured, a, a sort of more formal eating plan and you'll feel better uh, as well. So the first thing I'll, I'll say is it doesn't sound like you're following a, you know, a solid diet plan. So, you know, if you go to bodybuilding.com, you can look up my shortcut to uh, shred diet as well. You don't have to do the program. You can also learn the diet. And there's thousands of other diet articles on bodybuilding.com. So you can't go wrong. Pick a diet and stick with it. I guarantee you those five pounds will, uh, will uh, vanish. Actually, better for breaking a fast is protein. So uh, I'm one of the, the, the few experts in the field that actually has done the research in the lab, not just in the gym. And when I was at Yale School of Medicine, one of the areas that I researched was fasting. And what the data is suggesting is, the way that intermittent fasting works is it actually ramps up your caloric burn, if you will. A lot of people think that if you fast, it's going to slow your metabolic rate down. And that's, that's true to some degree, but what we find with intermittent fasting, where you fast for periods and then you eat, is that it increases these, these proteins that are called uncoupling proteins. And what they basically do is make your body less efficient at making energy, which means you need to burn more fat, more carbs, to get the same amount of energy, to do the same amount of work. That's what intermittent fasting does. What we've also found is that when you break the fast, if you break the fast with a high protein meal, the production of 
uncoupling proteins goes up further with the meal. If you follow the fast with a high carb meal, your levels are still elevated, but there's a, a blunting. So what I recommend is you break your fast, not with carbs, but with actually a high protein, it could be fat as well, high protein, high fat, but lower carbs. And then I typically have carbs about an hour or two after uh, that first meal. That way you get, that, you get the boost from the, the protein meal, and then you can follow uh, you know, with the carbs later on in the day. Is getting a solid eight hours of sleep really as important as most safe Sleep is definitely important, but everybody has their own uh, sort of sleep needs. You know, there's people who um, literally can survive on 15 minute blocks, but they just need several blocks throughout the day. So we're all different, but majority of humans need somewhere between seven to nine hours. Is it critical? Uh, yeah, I mean, to be optimal, um, does it mean that if you get five hours a night, you're just going to get fat and never gain any muscle? No. Uh, I went to bed last night at 4 a.m. Boise time, which is really 3 a.m. Uh, L.A. time. Uh, I, was up, I, I, I was up late. I was training. I was working on uh, some new training concepts. And I was working on some, some new content as well, turning in articles uh, that I owed bodybuilding.com. So it was a late night. But I also had an early morning here at Bodybuilding to Come, and so I had to wake up by 9 o'clock. So that's only five hours of sleep. Is that optimal? No, but am I get, and I have many days that that's just the way my life goes. Optimal is different than uh, essential. And so while you want to obviously shoot for, for more sleep, uh, you know, try to find what's what's important for you. What I try to do is find what my minimal sleep is, and that's about five hours. So I know, as long as I get five hours, I'm, I'm still uh, functional. My performance in the gym uh, doesn't vary. Once I start getting less, less than that, it sort of affects just my daily, you know, my daily routine, so. Someone said, hey doc, what's in that cup? So what's in, what's in my, my cup right here is, well, first of all, I, I got to give a shout out uh, to Blender Bottle. This is uh, their uh, double lines uh, stainless steel. This thing stays, if you put ice cold, it'll literally stay ice cold all day. So what I usually do is I put my pre-gym in here as my energy. It's not for, there's no pre-gym in here yet. So because I fast till four, the only thing I drink is black coffee uh, or usually tea black or green tea. And so what I've been doing lately is I mix half uh, black coffee with half black fresh brewed tea. It's, it's pretty amazing. I think they call it the Black Widow at, at Starbucks. So I posted the other day, I was calling it the Jim Stepani. It's like the Arnold Palmer, which is half iced tea and half lemonade. This is half iced tea, half, half black coffee. It's surprisingly like, I, I've had several people try it who don't like coffee or tea, but some, for some reason the combination, it's sort of like, it's, it's good. <laughs> try it, definitely try it. So that's what I drink. And the reason I go black coffee in, in unsweetened tea without the sweetener, once in a while I'll have like a, you know, maybe like a Coke Zero during my fast, but one of the concerns I have, and there's really no data to really tell us yes or no, one of the concerns I have with fasting is fasting is a mental state. Uh, the reason, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you can have branch chains when you fast. No, you can't have branch chains. Leucine actually targets the same receptor in muscle that stimulates muscle growth in the brain that tells the body it's fed. So if you're consuming branch chain amino acids, they're telling your body that you're in a fed state. Essentially, you're not fasting. If the brain thinks you're not fasting, you're not fasting. Doesn't matter whether or not those branch chain amino acids had many calories, you're not fasting. And so one of the concerns I have with sweeteners is that sweeteners fool the mind as well. Uh, and there's some data to show that uh, artificial sweeteners, just because of the way that they stimulate the receptors in the mouth, can increase insulin 
uh, release. And so my concern is, is that artificial sweeteners may influence the brain and sort of trick the brain into thinking that you're actually getting carbs because you're getting something that tastes sweet. Uh, and so if the brain, like I said, doesn't think you're in a fasted state, you're not in a fasted state even if you're not consuming those calories because that's where all that control happens. It happens in the brain. That's, that's what is gonna then change those metabolic processes that are gonna either burn more fat or store more fat. So uh, I typically try to not drink sweetened beverages. Um, what to do on shortcut to strength on non training days? Did you say uh, this is one more? Uh, last one? To, yeah, this is our last one. Okay, last. Sorry, guys. I, I've got a, uh, another session to go to. So, last question. So, what to do on non training days for shortcut to strength? So, I'm a firm believer in what I call active rest, meaning take a rest day from the gym. Or you don't even have to take a rest day from the gym, but take a rest day from the program. And that means if you, want to, if you want to go to the gym, you can go do kettlebell swings, you can do Tabatas, go for a hike, go for a swim, play basketball, stay active. You should really try to stay active every single day. So it's a rest day, but like I said, keep it an active rest day. All right, let's head over uh, to the flex wall. Right out here, right? Yep. Awesome, guys. Well, thanks, uh, thanks for uh, joining me here. I, I hope you all learned uh, a little bit about something today. I'll, uh, I'll be on Snapchat, bodybuilding.com Snapchat all day, so check out uh, my day here in Boise. And as always, stay gym, army strong.